The day had been fun. The magic of the holiday had been all around them. The games, the scandals, the jokes, and the romance. The old man and the old woman held hands even harder, looked into each other's eyes, and smiled. The years had been hard, yet worth it. How long had it been, he thought, when he had jumped over the fire with her, when their bond had first been forged? How long since he had seen such joy on her youthful face? Fifty years? Sixty? It mattered not. They were still together. Still there. She placed her head to his chest, a slight chuckle came from her. The day was winding down. The sun of Svadog was setting. As they watched the stars come out as the fires were lit, the days were good, and Svadog had been good to them. In the warmth of the fire, and in the warmth of marriage. Svadog is generally considered to be the smith of the Slavic pantheon, as well as a god who created the concept of monogamous marriage, and in some versions he is even the creator of the world itself. However, like much of Slavic myth, Svarog is bathed in contradictions, misunderstandings, and at times controversy. His written mythology is very little, while if more modern scholarship is taken into account, much more can be gleaned of this idol god than would seem at first glance. Aside from many Slavic place names, such as in Poland, the Czech Republic, and even in the East into Russia, one of the oldest mentions of Svarog is in the Hypatian Codex from the 15th century that translates a John Malala story from Egypt concerning Greek gods and transcribes the Slavic gods over the Greek ones, replacing Helios with Dasbog and Hephaestus with Svarog. The story ends up relating Svarog as the father of the solar deity Dasbog, and by equating him to Hephaestus in the story, ties Svarog in with not only blacksmithing, but also relates him as a god tied directly into monogamous marriage. Now what can we truly tell of the gods of this manuscript? Not much. The story itself likely has little if nothing to do with the Slavic gods it mentions, but it does bring two good points on both deities to the forefront, their associations. While Svarog and Dasbog may not have been the actual figures in the story, replacing the Greek with Slavic counterparts to make the information more appealing to Slavic readers implies the gods were likely at least loosely tied into their respective associations. This gives a good starting point to Svarog, a god of blacksmiths and possibly of marriage. From here comes the secondary main aspect of Svarog, and that is his association as the father of the gods and the creator of the world. The Slavs have quite a variety, and to this day, no one can truly agree on the order of the pantheon, with Perun, Rod, Svadog, Yurilo, Svetovid, Dasbog, and even Makash vying for the throne as chief of the pantheon. However, for the sake of Svarog, as he is the focus here, I will give it to him for the time being. Two differing versions of this tale seem to exist. One deems him a sleeping god, and that the world is his dream. If ever he should wake, the world will end. This is oddly reminiscent of Lovecraft's Azathoth, the Great Dreamer, and calls to mind a sort of apocalyptic conception of the world as merely a dream of a higher being. Though another interpretation could be that the world exists as it is due to the idleness and general slumber of Svarog, and when he wakes, this world will change or end, as it were. Another version, not yet mutually exclusive conception of Svarog, is that he forged the world and gods into being. This version is from the controversial Book of Koliada, but as it is disputed and not outright rejected, it deserves at least some acknowledgement regardless of personal feelings towards its merit. Involving the Alatir or Altar Stone, this stone ties into the story of Svadog sending numerous gods and then eventually a duck to retrieve land from beneath the waves. Breathing power borrowed from Rod into the bird, the bird returned three years later and gifted Svarog with a certain amount of land from the bottom within its beak. Svarog knew something was amiss, as the duck did not give over the stone. Still Svarog breathed into the earth, warming it with his hands, and the sun which slowly expanded the land further and further. While at the same time, the duck, unable to hold on to the growing Alatir stone, dropped it, and where it landed formed the mountain Elbrus, also known as Golden Mountain. Now in another tale, it remained with Svarog. The stone was said to be a center of knowledge and wisdom, and drew many people to it. Believing no man should know about the stones, Svarog took his hammer and attempted to destroy the altar Alatir stone. 
However, this only created sparks, which supposedly birthed gods such as Smargul and created winds that bore Strybog. Smargul would engage in a war with a snake, who was the child of the duck and had been sent to take the stone. Eventually fleeing to the heavenly smithy, Smargul received aid from Svarog, who tamed the snake and made it useful for agriculture. Following this, the stone eventually found its way to Earth to become Mount Elbrus, and an important temple was built around it. Svarg was also said to have taught people to use milk and curds, effectively becoming a god associated with dairy products. He later also engages in a war with giants in the Ural Mountains, and defeated them with the help of his army. The Book of Koliata also says that Svarg created a kind of heaven for the souls of the ancestors to reside in, known as Blue Svarga which directly contradicts the story of the underworld of Nav. However, this secondary set of tales and concepts of Svarg has even less bearing than the first, and the Book of Koliata is often considered poorly researched. However, its inspiration comes from the folklore of the Slavic peoples and does its best to present the myths as it can. At most, it be, could be concluded to be either a less than optimally researched text or a work of fiction. Though regardless of either, the stories allow various concepts to be shown and described in the absence of widely known tales of Svarog. The attempt to tie many of Svarog's aspects together into one set of stories is actually rather impressive. However, in combination of folklore and current pagan beliefs, Svarog has been attributed a quite large amount of progeny, and is typically associated with having a certain goddess as a wife, which ties into the more romantic side of Svarog. Svarog is said to be married to Lada, a goddess of marriage and love. He also has several children, such as the above-mentioned Smargul, Strybog, and Dazbog, though he is also credited as the father of Perun, Svarozivik, and Radagast. His association with Lada is a more commonly accepted part of his modern lore in Slavic circles, most likely due to his association with monogamy and marriage. Svarog has one more possible story worthy of note, involving a blacksmith in a fairy tale. In the form of a divination song involving a divine smith with three hammers that a woman asked to make her wedding jewelry. A crown, a ring, and a pin. Essentially asking him to arrange her marriage. This ties back not only into Svarog's smithing, but also his relationship to both marriage and love via Lada. The overall ideas of Svarog vary region to region. Given his generally considered status as an idol god or even a dreaming god, Svarog had much less in the folklore than other gods who were more proactive in interacting with humans. Given his role and how widely it seems to vary, as well as the sources which range from folklore to translations of other works, to what amounts to research fiction, it can be hard to glean what Svarog does and who he truly is. Is Svarog a creator deity? Or is Veles? Or Rod? His story seems to point to using his own two hands and strength to craft the world for his people at least in some versions of the tale. In others, he seems a jack-of-all-trades deity who nearly completed something every father wishes for their children, for them to surpass him. Perun surpasses him in strength. Smargul and Svarozivik take his place in being the spirit of the fire. Dazbog takes his role in regards to the sun. Strybog commands the prosperity of man. Radagast repays his kindness forward as a god of hospitality, leaving him essentially retired, having done his duty save for one thing. He is still the heavenly smith, and like any good retired individual, he still does what he loves. Perhaps his idleness is well earned, and perhaps it is not the world itself but the age we are in that will leave when Svarog wakes, but there are many ways to dream and many beautiful things to make. What is taken or not taken as true to Svarog is up for debate. Regardless, as Slavic paganism grows and matures, his importance is not likely to diminish, while confusion and flawed theories have produced many issues, causing the integration of both Hindu and Christian elements into Slavic ethnic faith, the goal has continued to be honest in the hopes of reviving the spirituality and old ways of the Slavic peoples.